Flower Aviation means one thing. It's Pueblo, Colorado. It just landed in the Vision Jet coming from California and heading back to Chicago for a few days. Got to trade out some Vision Jets and everything. But I'm excited to explore this. You know, as you can see, it's hot out, it's bright out, it's dusty. They're fueling up the Vision Jet right now. The really cool thing in the G2 Plus is that there's added uh, performance with the engine enhancement. So let's sit down with ForeFlight. ForeFlight just released the new G2 Plus numbers. So really excited to do this. Let's do a little planning and see how much runway we're gonna use out of uh, Pueblo today. Good thing is they got a really long 10,000 plus foot runway, but it's 35 degrees out right now. So it's pretty hot. So let's take a look, use ForeFlight. Should be pretty cool. So I'm sitting inside of Flower Aviation doing the flight planning back to Chicago right now. And um, I'm gonna go into ForeFlight here and show you, but I'll, afterwards, after we do the flight planning, I'm gonna show you around Flower Aviation. It's probably my favorite place to stop. It's a great spot. No arrival procedures, no departure procedures. They turn you around really fast. And I'll give you a tour of the FBO. It's really fantastic. They've got a lot of cool um, uh, stuff here, including some snacks and, and, and all that. So great place to stop, get in, get out, and, uh, and carry on. But first, let's take a look at the planning here, show you the G2 Plus numbers compared to a G1, so you can see the runway distance and how much more powerful the G2 Plus is. Um, and utilizing, we'll use the new four flight feature of runway data. So let's take a look. All right, so we just did this flight right here from SNA to Pueblo in uh, November 2 Golf Whiskey. And that is a S, uh, an SF-50 Vision Jet um, that is uh, really, that's a brand new G2 Plus. So I've got this one filed in two golf whiskey, um, but then also here's one uh, in with a G1. So we'll take a difference and look using the, the takeoff runway analysis between a G2 plus and an original G1 aircraft. So on an original G1, if I tap this in, um, I have and subscribe to the four flight runway analysis here. I can look at and see Pueblo and Milwaukee or Chicago executive where I'm going. I kind of like this because I can plug in my departure time and uh, tells me my arrival time. That's very helpful when communicating with FBOs and crossing time zones. Um, another cool fact is saying, hey, I need to be in Chicago by 5 p.m. I can come over here and say, uh, figure out what time program a, an arrival time in and say that, all right, I need to be there by 5 p.m. today. And my, it will adjust a takeoff time of 124 that's the latest that i need to leave here pueblo so um but i will leave it at that for right now so anyway but let's take a look at this this is a generation one airplane serial number uh before uh serial number 13 so one of the very original ones so if i come over here and subscribe this little icon for takeoff will be displayed and i can do a couple different things i can first ex figure out what runway I'm going to be using out of um, out of Pueblo and the runway 26 left is usually the one that we're always using or uh, I think it's eight right so the big 10,500 foot long runway so we've got that so we've we have 26 left today selected it's a 10,500 or 498 foot long runway uh, the weather is pulled in right now from the METAR, so it's using, uh, the winds are 210 at 5, the temperature is 35 degrees Celsius, and um, the field elevation here is pretty high. So we're up at like right around 4, uh, 4,800 feet, somewhere right around there. But um, let's take a look. So we've got a takeoff weight of 5,883 pounds. Um, and let's see, I, these are different values that you can input. So if you want to play around with this feature, you can actually crank up the temperature and see what your max runway limitation is and how hot it is. Like if you're flying out of Las Vegas, you can really play with that or Aspen somewhere, somewhere where it might become an issue. So you can really use this to play around. But based on the weather today and our weight configuration, Let's actually just put this as a baseline of 6,000 pounds, um, and we'll have that. So flaps at 50, no ice for takeoff. Uh, we can start reading this here. So our rotation speed today is going to be 90 knots. 
our ground roll, so this is how much pavement we're gonna be using, is 4591. Um, and our total distance, our safe takeoff distance, is 7,500 feet of runway. So this isn't a generation one. This is the number that we're gonna sort of plan everything around and make sure that we feel really good good about. So 7,500 feet is, is perfect here. Um, and then beyond that, there's a couple other things in terms of climb gradients and things that you'll have here. So up here, we'll see, this is a little summary of what we've got, 6,000 pounds. It's 7,500 feet of runway that's needed in an original G1 airplane to, to depart. So that's a lot of runway, but luckily here at Pueblo, out west, the runways are usually long enough. But let's now compare this to, in two Golf Whiskey, our G2 Plus, what we're gonna be running into. All right, so here we are, two Golf Whiskey. This is our G2 Plus that we're flying around. I'm gonna go ahead and tap on that. Same thing, we've got a, a departure time of about 12.55 here and uh, everything is exactly the same. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit the takeoff button. And just from the synoptic page, you can start to see a huge difference here. Um, but let's go ahead and make sure that our baseline is correct. I'm gonna set up, change our weight to 6,000 pounds. That's our max gross takeoff weight. Everything else was the same, 210 at five knots, and the temperature was 35 degrees. Cool. Everything else should be really good here. So we're gonna use runway 26 left, 10,000 foot plus long runway, but we can already see that 5691 is gonna be our total takeoff distance. Absolutely huge compared to 7,500 feet. So if we scroll down here, we can start reading that our ground roll has gone from about 4,500 feet to the amount of pavement that we're gonna use here is 3,773. So really big differences, much better climb gradients and all that. So the G2 Plus did two things. One, it added a fuel, um, a new fuel control unit to be able to support the amount of fuel going into the airplane to make this, to achieve the different power. And then the second thing was the ability, the, the, the reflashing of the FADEX software to command a higher takeoff rating or power on, uh, on takeoff here. So. We're feeling really, really good about this here. So 5691 total takeoff distance for runway 26 left today, as opposed to an original G1 or G2 without the G2 plus uh, enhancements and engine upgrades. Uh, big difference in that. So flying around out west where I'm at, Vegas, St. George, Utah, Sedona, Arizona, Scottsdale, all these different airports are now unlocked, which are which are huge. Anybody flying out on the East Coast or maybe at a sea level airport, you can now play around with this a little bit and start to see how nice that is from a from a standpoint of um, uh, a, maybe a shorter runway down down low at sea level. So really a lot of power was unlocked with this G2 Plus. So there's the numbers, the real live numbers in the in the wild here at uh, flower aviation in, in Pueblo, Colorado. So what I'm gonna do here is just uh, come back. So a little quick synoptics, and I get a lot of questions around this for the G2 Plus. From here, Pueblo to Pawaukee, when we depart, um, let's see, we wanna be departing at, uh, let's say now, plus 30 minutes. So about 1.15 is by the time we're actually gonna probably be wheels up at this point. It's two hours and 35 minutes of flight time, covering eight, eight, 807 miles. And the fuel that we're gonna be using is 178 gallons. So pretty cool when we actually take a look at this. Um, I'll send that to the map so that way we can start to see what our route looks like here. This is all just on my cell phone, so forgive me here. Thought I'd put this together um, as we go, but as we get from uh, central Nebraska into um, the plains, going into Chicago Executive, we're gonna be in a really good spot here. We'll play around with the weather radar. Should be a lot of fun. There's a lot of value when traveling big trips across the country, for example, like California back to Chicago and finding the right airport to stop at. You really wanna keep the day moving and Pueblo and Flower Aviation is the perfect example of an airport and an FBO that, that are set up for success for this. 
They have great snacks, great food, um, and just, just the right amount of stuff to uh, keep you there while you're getting your fuel and then uh, hop back in the airplane and, and take off and leave. Um, as a matter of fact, just from a fueling operation, uh, when I, ha I put my fuel order in via phone call and via ForeFlight before I, uh, before I came in, so they were teed up for success, and uh, it was just fantastic. When we landed, shut down, before I was even out of the airplane, they were basically done fueling with my fuel order. Uh, as you can see here, there's a lot of great snacks, really comfortable place to sit down, um, anything from popcorn to cotton candy, ice cream bars, hot dogs, nachos, whatever you need, it's, it's all right here. So finding the right airport to tee you up for a quick turn uh, and you're a little hungry is absolutely fantastic. So highly recommend checking out Pueblo, Colorado and Flower Aviation. Thank you for taking some time and working through those four flight numbers and the performance data. I love that feature in four flight on the G2 Plus. You can really see a big contrast and it allows you to really dive in and explore whether or not the airport that you're looking at going in and out of is doable based on runway length, temperature, wind conditions, all that stuff. Such a powerful tool. Well, um, another, just a quick thing, I'm gonna show a little clip here at the very end of the video, and I was flying over Flagstaff, and it, there was this raging wildfire. So, I just wanted to bring awareness around that again, that be careful out there when you're flying around, there's a lot of turbulence that can get kicked out of these things. They are very powerful um, with a lot of wind and, and, and can really change uh, the dynamics of a flight with the TFRs and, and everything. So. As we get into wildfire season, keep an eye out, report any unusual wildfires where you might see or think that they're starting, but uh, they can get out of hand pretty fast and, and they make a big impact on summer flying out west. So take a look at that footage. It's, it's, uh, it's, this, one's, this one's pretty powerful. But anyway, thanks so much for watching. Always appreciate everyone that comes up and says hi and uh, love spending a little time with you um, at Oshkosh or air shows that we're seeing at. Really makes, uh, makes a big impact on me. But if you like what you see, consider liking and subscribing. It does the channel a whole lot of good and, and there's uh, a lot of flying coming up here this summer. So a lot more videos coming along. So until then, thanks so much for watching and we'll see you soon.